What if someone you love started showing emotions that didn't belong, outbursts that made no sense, feelings that didn't match the moment, or reactions that felt completely out of character? These are known as phantom emotions, strange, irrational behaviors that often appear years before memory loss ever begins. And they're one of the most overlooked warning signs of dementia. A major study in neurology found that emotional instability often surfaces five to 10 years before cognitive decline is measurable. That means if you're noticing sudden emotional shifts in someone close to you, it could be far more serious than it seems. Let's start with number one, phantom rage over nothing. Frank's wife knew something was wrong when he screamed at a cashier for giving him the wrong receipt. He used to be calm, even soft-spoken. But over the next two years, he began yelling at neighbors, snapping at the TV, and muttering under his breath when traffic slowed. The smallest disruptions, like a misplaced remote or a slow-loading website, could set him off. It didn't matter whether he was tired, hungry, or perfectly rested, his temper would ignite without warning. Two and a half years after the incident at the grocery store, Frank was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at the age of 74. Scientists found that explosive reactivity, especially when the trigger is minor, is often one of the first behavioral changes in dementia, particularly in Alzheimer's and frontotemporal types. The emotional control centers of the brain begin to lose function long before memory is affected. This kind of raw anger isn't personality. It's neurological breakdown in disguise, and it often goes unnoticed until it becomes impossible to manage. Number two, tears that make no sense. Six years before his diagnosis, 69-year-old James began crying while relaxing with his wife. No one had died, nothing bad had happened. He just felt overwhelmed. The tears would come again during TV commercials, when washing dishes, or while reading mail. Sometimes, he didn't even realize he was crying until someone pointed it out. Once he cried during a routine phone call, unable to explain why, his wife assumed it was stress, until the crying became daily, and later, uncontrollable. A medical review found that spontaneous crying without sadness is a common sign of limbic system dysfunction. Especially in vascular dementia, the emotional circuits misfire, releasing powerful responses without an appropriate internal or external cause. Over time, this misalignment between emotion and experience becomes more frequent and more confusing. It's an emotional signal with no message behind it, and when left unrecognized, it can mask the early decay of emotional control Number three, laughing when it's not funny. At her sister's funeral, Martha, 78, started laughing, not a quiet chuckle, full-on giggling. Everyone thought it was grief-induced shock, but she laughed again when her husband tripped and fell, and again when a neighbor had a heart attack. It wasn't just laughing. She would smile or even applaud during tragic news reports. Her daughter was horrified. Four years later, Martha was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. A new analysis found that inappropriate laughter is linked to degeneration of the frontal lobes, which regulate empathy, social behavior, and context. Without those guardrails, the brain can misinterpret or overreact to emotional cues, flipping sadness into joy or seriousness into silliness. This mismatch can lead to social embarrassment, isolation and misdiagnoses, such as mania or trauma responses. When the brain can't read the room, even heartbreak becomes comedy, and the person has no idea they've crossed a line. Number four, emotional numbness that feels wrong. When Clara's lifelong best friend died, she barely reacted. Well, that's just life, she said watching TV. She didn't attend the funeral. She didn't even mention it again. At first, her daughter thought she was trying to be strong, but Clara's emotional detachment continued. Birthdays, holidays, even her own cancer diagnosis came and went with barely a shrug. When her great-grandson was born, she offered no congratulations. 
Nearly three and a half years later, she was diagnosed with behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia at the age of 84. Research suggests that emotional flatness during high-impact events is one of the earliest signs of damage in areas of the brain responsible for empathy and emotional engagement. It often reflects early deterioration of the orbital frontal cortex and anterior cingulate gyrus, areas that help us respond emotionally to events that matter. It's not strength, it's absence, a silence where connection used to be, replaced by emotional indifference. Number five, phantom euphoria, out of nowhere. Dennis, 75, was in a restaurant when he suddenly clapped and shouted, what a wonderful day. His wife laughed nervously, but it happened again, at the hospital, in traffic, even at the cemetery. He began breaking into song on sidewalks, hugging strangers, and planning random celebrations for no reason. His bursts of joy became erratic and inappropriate. Over the next three years, these highs became more exaggerated until he was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. Experts report that sudden excessive euphoria, especially in inappropriate contexts, is tied to dopamine imbalance and frontal lobe degeneration, particularly in dementia that affects emotional regulation. This isn't optimism or energy, it's dysregulation of the brain's pleasure centers, which fail to filter when and how emotion should be expressed. Sometimes a smile says everything is fine when the wiring behind it is falling apart in silence. Number six, when sarcasm turns cold and cruel. Alan was always known for his sharp wit, but at 72, it began to cut deeper. Oh, you finally did something right, he said to his wife during dinner. What used to be playful teasing turned into constant jabs, cruel, awkward, and often in front of guests. At first, his family chalked it up to retirement stress, but the sarcasm became colder, more personal, and increasingly out of place. Two years into this shift, they realized something was wrong. Alan was later diagnosed with mixed dementia, five years after that first bitter comment. A study in Brain found that loss of empathy and emotional regulation can transform ordinary sarcasm into hurtful speech especially in the early stages of frontotemporal or Alzheimer's-related dementia. These individuals may be unaware of the emotional harm they cause and even laugh when others are visibly uncomfortable or hurt. It's not just a darker sense of humor. It's the brain forgetting how to care while the person continues thinking everything's normal. Number seven, breakdowns over nothing. Lorraine was 66 when she began having breakdowns over the smallest things. When her favorite store stopped carrying a handbag, she collapsed into sobs. When a restaurant ran out of shrimp, she screamed so loudly that other diners left. At home, a lost set of keys could lead to an hour-long emotional spiral. Her family was stunned. It wasn't like her. These episodes became more frequent and more intense. Over the next four years, Lorraine was diagnosed with early onset dementia. A major study uncovered that exaggerated emotional reactions to minor frustrations are often due to early breakdowns in executive function, particularly in the prefrontal cortex. When the brain can no longer regulate scale and proportion, it reacts to a small setback, the same way it might react to a major loss. This isn't someone being dramatic, it's the brain treating every inconvenience like a catastrophe because it's lost the ability to gauge emotional weight. Number eight, delusions of betrayal. At 73, Helen accused her husband of cheating. She said he was having an affair with the neighbor, then the nurse, then the mail carrier. She started checking his phone, following him around the house and making bizarre accusations at family gatherings. Her husband had never been unfaithful, and there was no logical explanation. Even their daughter became a target of suspicion. Sometimes, Helen would whisper that people were watching her through the windows. Two years later, she was diagnosed with Lewy body dementia. 
A clinical study linked delusional jealousy and paranoia to early cognitive breakdown, especially in Lewy body and Alzheimer's forms of dementia. As the temporal and parietal lobes deteriorate, the brain begins inventing threats and conspiracies that don't exist. These false beliefs are often resistant to logic and explanation. This kind of mistrust doesn't come from insecurity. It comes from failing circuits that confuse perception, memory, and fear. Number 9. Phantom Outbursts of Profanity Betty, 77, was the most polite woman in the neighborhood until she suddenly started swearing at church. It wasn't once. She cursed at a bus driver, her grandchildren, even a stranger at the park. Her daughter thought it was medication, but then she began shouting obscenities at inanimate objects, like her television or a teapot. The language was shocking, especially from someone so refined. Two and a half years after the first outburst, Betty was diagnosed with behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia. A scientific review confirmed that sudden, uncontrolled profanity is a sign of damage to the brain's language and inhibition centers, especially the left frontal cortex. It's called coprolalia, and while rare, it appears in dementia types that erode speech and restraint. The person often has no memory of what they said or no awareness that it was inappropriate at all. When someone starts speaking like a stranger, it may be because part of them already is, and that part no longer knows the difference between acceptable and offensive. They don't come from nowhere. They come from a brain in trouble. Notice them early and speak up, because by the time memory fades, the damage is already done. And there you have it. What are your thoughts? Next, dive into this video for more essential tips to transform your health and help you thrive. You're going to love it. Thanks for watching Healthy End, and we'll see you there.